Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter four talking about test analysis and design and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 4.2, the black box test techniques. And today, as a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be extending a little bit on the equivalence partition itself as we do have some more additional concepts to be discussed about. So let's quickly get started and talk about the same. So in our previous tutorial, we tried understanding what happens when you have a single set of input and different outputs for different partitions. Of course, in all the examples questions what we discussed, we took only one particular input type. But what happens when the input types are multiple as well? And as a part of the syllabus, we really have this into the count that we may be given with some example questions or some questions in the examinations which may have multiple inputs as well. So it's very crucial, very important for someone to really know how to handle this type of questions as well and be aware of what happens when we have multiple inputs, not just one, in order to get to the desired number of minimum test cases. So we'll be taking directly the example questions from here because the concept, concept remains the same. But all we want to tell you is that we try to combine multiple inputs together and see that every single input has been tested at least once with the minimum number of test cases. So the whole goal, please remember this statement throughout this particular tutorial, that the goal is to minimize the test cases, but at least every single condition, no matter how many number of inputs you get, should be tested at least once. Okay, so let's get started. We'll be taking the very first sample example questions from here to try understanding how this multiple input question would look like. And right here, we look at the very first question. So here, the first question, let's look it into a very, very formal way of understanding in an examination way. So the question says, you are testing a simplified apartment search form, which has only two search criteria. Now there are two inputs right here, which you can pretty much see. Number one is floor and second is garden type. The floor has three possible options. That is ground floor, first floor, second or higher floor. Now second or higher floor is the third category what we have. So that means anything beyond that. So now as you can see that we have multiple inputs and at the same time there are multiple options for that. So let's try understanding how exactly this will be actually sorted out. But let's complete the question first. So given that we have floor as three options, that is ground, first floor and second or higher floor is one particular category. And garden floor, the garden type is having again three possibilities which is no garden, small garden and large garden. Now in this case, we have three options each for each of the classification and let's have a look on what exactly the expectations are. It also says the only apartments on the ground floor have garden. So they have also given you some constraints which makes it very clear that what is supposed to be taken into account and what should not be in terms of removing and eliminating the test cases, which is the most important part of when we have multiple inputs, right? So only the apartments on the ground floor, we have garden, which is logical as well. The first floor doesn't have a garden at all. So the form has a built-in validation mechanism that will not allow you to use the search criteria which violate this rule. That means when you moment, the moment you select the first floor or any other higher floors, you will not have an option to select the garden type at all. That means it does not work there at all. So that's, we don't have to consider that as a part of our test case creation. Let's further continue. So we have each test has two input values, that is floor and garden type. So that's how we combine the test cases. Okay, that's how we combine the test cases. Now you want to apply equivalence partition to cover each floor and each garden type in your test. Now that's what the point I mentioned to you in the beginning that make sure that every single option is covered in your test case at least once by forming the right set of combination, which is minimum set of combinations. So let's see what exactly the options look like. So here they have just given you straightforward that what is the minimum number of test cases to achieve 100% EP coverage, which is equivalence partition. And we have just test cases as three, four, five, six. So let's quickly bring the table on the screen. And uh, these are my four test cases, what I'll be having. Number one, I'll take ground floor with small garden because ground floor has the garden type possible. And at the same time, the two types of garden possible are small and large. So I must make sure that ground floor has been tested with both the options that is small and large. So test one, ground floor with small garden. Test two, ground floor with large garden. And test three will go into the next floor 
that is first floor and uh, that's for the no garden because first floor does not have any kind of garden and the third category which is second floor and any higher floor will also have no garden so in this context if i see this for these four test cases covers every single option and at the same time it it, it just gets covered with everything what we really need to have and there's nothing which we can eliminate from here because that's minimum and at the same time we are not repeating anything that looks extra so this is the minimum number of test cases what you need to have in order to test this particular scenario now put together we all will need is number four as the right answer that is option b here so four are the minimum number of test cases to cover 100 percent equivalence partition coverage so I hope you got a wonderful understanding of this particular scenario as well. But just for your confidence or better confidence, we will take one more example to make sure that you have really understood what exactly it looks like. But this time the twist will be we will have three inputs. Try to see does the test case changes. So the next question on your screen is talking about you are testing a flight booking application of some airline that is ABC. Below are the constraints in order to book a flight ticket. One. Only staff of ABC airline can book a flight. So right here, it clearly says that only the staff of that company, that is airline company, can book a flight. That means nobody else. So I think here we have two options. So sometimes it's not specifically mentioned that uh, you have two different things, but you can certainly have, you know, detections of the options. So one category is staff and second category is non-staff. That means anyone other than the staff. Right. The next one here is a flight can be booked only on a weekday. That is Monday to Friday. And that's don't forget, you are still talking about equivalence partition. So Monday to Friday is one collection, which is a valid input. And same way weekend, that is Saturday and Sunday becomes an invalid. input. So again, here I have two different partitions or two different options, weekday and weekend. Let's go to the third constraint. And the third constraint says a flight can be booked only between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And here, also, I have two partitions that is one before 9 a.m. and one after 5 p.m. Sorry, 9 to 5 is valid and any other time is invalid. Okay, but if you notice very precisely here, we have three different partitions, not just two for the time. Because after 12 midnight, the date changes and it can become Saturday, right? So I cannot just classify this into two categories. I have to basically make three categories that is midnight, 0, 0, 0 hours to 8.59 is one partition, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. is second partition, and then 5.01, that is 17.01 hours to 23.59 hours is my third category because the date matters here because Thursday night, which is invalid, can still change the date to, uh, sorry, Friday night can still change the date to the Saturday. However, the booking is not happening there, so it should be okay, but still, when it comes to time, sometimes you have to be very careful with them. So let's look at again the question what they're trying to ask. So question exactly remains same. Each test contains input from all three constraints. So this time all the three inputs will be taken into account. And we, in order to reduce the number of test cases, what is the minimum number of test cases to achieve 100% equivalence partition coverage? Okay, and the options pretty much remain the same because it will be somewhere inside that. So let's bring the table on the screen and talk about it. So table is right here. And let's have a look what are the test cases we have. So in order to solve this, I'll take test one as tough because it's a valid person doing it on the weekday at 11 a.m. So see, this is how we take the three inputs in just one test. Like let us tough book it on a weekday. When I say any, it means let it be any day of the weekday. It can be Tuesday, Wednesday, take any one of that. Okay, so it's not particularly that you should take a particular day. That's the reason I did not mention it, but rather mentioned you can take any of them. Okay, so weekday, let it be any weekday and taking the time 11 a.m. So this is my valid test case, which is going to pass or should pass. Second, test two, staff on a weekday, but doing it at 7 p.m. So that's one of the scenario again, that a staff is trying to book on a weekday, but outside the limit of the timings. Then this should not be booked, right? Same way, a staff can also be trying to book on weekend and take any random time because anything on weekend should not be possible. So I'm taking 1 p.m. as a consideration. So test three, weekend, that is Saturday and Sunday, take any and time, again, take any. I'm just taking 1 p.m. as an example. And then one more test only for the invalid classifications. 
that is non-stuff on any day of the week at any time of the day, right? And that's it. It just covers all my options given in the criteria and takes everything into account. So that certainly gives me the complete coverage that is 100% coverage of equivalence partition. Sometimes you might be confused, so I took 3.3 types uh, input type as well, so that you should not get carried away that here I should have six test cases or something. Uh, it's just that what is the best combination possible in order to minimize the test cases, right? So again, the right answer here is option B, that is four. Four test cases are needed in order to get to the right answer, right? So. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.